Hi, it's David from Darknatic. So, in this video, we're going to be talking about Gustav Kirchhoff's contribution to circuit analysis. We're going to see the parts of a circuit network, and we're going to understand Kirchhoff's current and voltage lot, and do a real example designing a very common circuit. So, let's get started. <laughs> All right, so let's first briefly review some information. A circuit has nodes, branches, and networks. So a node is any point in a circuit where components are connected together. Then we have the branches that are the representation of components extremities. So the branches are connected in nodes and networks are basically a closed path in a circuit when current can flow. So a network has nodes and also has branches. In addition, we need to remember that we may have voltage drops and voltage rises in a circuit. Usually, a voltage source is a representation of a voltage rise, but remember that when the current is flowing from a lower potential to a higher potential, that's going to be a voltage rise. But if we have a current flowing from a higher potential, to a lower potential, that's going to be a voltage drops. So think about this. You have two voltage sources connected in series. The first one is going to lower potential to positive potential, and the second one is going to a higher potential to lower potential. So in that case, you will need to subtract the second one from the first one because the voltages are in different sense. And if, for instance, you have a voltage source going from negative to positive, and the other voltage source connected in series going to negative to positive, you will need to add them together because they are in the same sense. Now that we have reviewed this information, let's move on to Kirchhoff current law. Okay, so current Kirchhoff law. This law basically states that the sum of all the currents flowing into a node must be equal to all the currents flowing out of the same node. In other words, this means all the currents acting in a single node must be equal to zero. Let's see an example so that we can better understand. All right, so basically we have this circuit. First, we're going to identify how many nodes we have, and we have two nodes. We have node A and node B. Now that we have the nodes identified, we need to see what are the currents going in and going out of the node. So for node A, we have current 1 and current 2 going inwards the node, and we have current 3 going outwards the node. And for node B, we have a current 4 going inwards, and we have also current 3 going inwards the node, and we have current 5 going outwards. So our problem here is to calculate I5. However, in order to do this, we need to know first current I3. So, um, regarding Kirchhoff current law, current 3 is going to be equal to current 1 plus current 2. So, if we replace that with our information, uh, with the real values, that's going to be um, 1.5 amps plus 2.7 amps equal to 4.2 amps. Now that we have current um, current 3, it's easier to calculate current 5. So current 5 is going to be um, current 3 plus current 4. These are the currents um, going inwards the node. And current 5 then is going to be equal to 4.2 amps plus 3.3 amps equal to 7.5 amps. Perfect. So we have this circuit solved. We know all the currents. And this is basically how Kirchhoff current law works. So now it's time to talk about the Kirchhoff voltage law or KVL. So this law basically states that the sum of all the voltage drops must be equal to all the voltage rises in a single circuit network. Or in other words, that the sum of all the voltages, including rises and drops, must be equal to zero. So there are some steps that we need to follow before applying KVL. And the first one is that we need to identify the different networks in the circuit and write down the current direction. What I basically do is write the current direction coming out of the positive pool 
of the bigger voltage source in the network. Step two, um, we need to tag our component's polarity. So here what I do is to follow the idea that I express in the beginning of the video. So we know resistor cause um, voltage drops, so the current must be flowing from the from a higher potential to a lower potential. So that means positive, negative. And finally, we we can go ahead and apply and write down our KVL equation. So besides the idea that I expressed in the beginning of the video, that you know the current and the potential, this convention may be useful. And voltages in the same sense are positive, and voltages in the different sense are negative. So now that we know this, let's go ahead and see this information applied in a real circuit so we can better understand it. Awesome. So this is the circuit that we want to um, calculate the voltage drops across the three different resistors. So we're going to go through the steps that I previously mentioned to apply Kirchhoff voltage law. So first, we're going to see how many networks we have here. We have uh, two networks, the one with the 12 volts power supply and the one with 9 volts power supply. And secondly, we're going to write down our current direction. So I'm going to follow the idea the current must be flowing from the positive pole of the power supply to negative. And we're going also to write down our currents acting in node A. So we have current I1, current I2 flowing inwards and all, and current I3 flowing outwards and all. Now that we have this information, it's time to tag our component's polarity. So I'm sorry I forgot to do it here on the paper, but I'm going to put it on the screen so that you can see it. So we're going to follow the idea that resistors cause voltage drops, so the current must be flowing from a higher potential to a lower potential. That means positive to negative. So for R1, um, starting from the 12 volts power supply, we're going to have positive and then negative. In R2, we're starting from the 9 volts power supply, we're going to have positive to negative. And um, in R3, we're going to have positive to negative starting on the upper extremity of the resistor tree. Awesome. So now we have all the information that we need. Let's go ahead and write down our KVL equations. So for network 1, we have 12 volts minus voltage 1 minus voltage 3 equal to 0. And for network 2, we have 9 volts minus voltage 2 minus voltage 3 equals to 0. So, you know, what we want to do here is to know voltage 1, voltage 2, and voltage 3. So let me isolate voltage 1 and voltage 2 from the first two equations. So voltage 1 is going to be equal to 12 minus voltage 3, and voltage 2 is going to be equal to 9 volts minus voltage 3. If you take a closer look here, you can see that we have a common unknown value, and that is voltage 3. So now our work is to find an equation for voltage 3 that has nothing to do with voltage 1 or voltage um, 2. So let me do that by writing down a Kirchhoff current law um, equation for node A. So we have that the current flowing outwards in L is equal to the currents uh, to the sum of the currents flowing inwards in L. So we have I3 equals to I1 plus I2. And let me use Ohm's law here. And we have voltage 3 over R3 equal to voltage 1 over R1 plus voltage 2 over R2. So now that we have this equation, we can replace the values for voltage 1 and voltage 2 using the equation that we have above so that we can have all the equation, the whole equation, in terms of voltage 3. That is the value that we, that we want to, to calculate. So um, we're going to have the voltage 1 is equal to 12 volts minus voltage 3, and we're going to have that voltage 2 is equal to 9 volts minus voltage 3. Awesome. So now that we have this equation, basically um, we're going just to replace the values for the resistors with the information that we have in our circuit. We're going to resolve um, the sum of the fractions and at the end doing some applying some algebra, we're going to have the voltage stream 
is equal to 1008 over 203. And that is going to give me um, 4.96 volts, or let me round it to 5 volts. Awesome. So we voltage tree. Now we have almost the word done. So let me just go ahead and pull this value in the equations for voltage 1 and voltage 2. So voltage 2 is equal to 4.04 volts, or let me round it to 4 volts, and voltage 1 is equal to 7.04 volts. Oh, let's just round it to 7 volts. Awesome. We have all the values resolved. So this is basically how Kirchhoff voltage law and how Kirchhoff current law can help us to have these um, circuits um, resolve in, in, in an easier way. So now let's do an example designing a very real common circuit. Imagine you were told to design a window compatibility circuit that produces a high signal when the input is signal is between two different values. Those two different values, the range between those is what we call the window. However, if the input signal is out of that window, the output signal will be zero. So the window in this case, we want it to be between 9 volts and 3 volts. And the circuit is powered by a 12 volts power supply. Our work here is to design a voltage divider network to produce the 9 volts and the 3 volts. So let's do it. Here I have the three circuits. The first one is the whole voltage divider network we want to design. The second one is the voltage divider for VH. And the third one is the voltage divider for VL. So now we need to know the equations for a simple voltage divider. Even though this equation is out there ready to use, um, I want to demonstrate how it was found using KVL. Okay, so first, let me write down my KVL equation for the voltage divider network. Then I'm going to isolate VR1 and VR2 from equation 1. Now, I'm going to apply Ohm's law to rewrite equations for VR1 and VR2. Now, I rewrite equation 1 using these Ohm's um, law equation for VR1 and VR2. Then I just go all about isolating current I to have it in terms of Vn and the resistors. With that done, I have found my first critical equation, the equation for the output value. Now, our work is to find an equation for resistor 2. Awesome. So I have the equation for resistor 2. So with everything that I have here, I'm just I'm going to just um to replace the values for the voltage dividers network that, that we need to, to design. So for the VH voltage divider, I want VH to be 9 volts. So I am using a 5k ohm resistor as R1. So I just need to find a value for R2 that will let me have a 9 volts um, as an output. And this is a 15k ohm resistor. For the second voltage divider, the one for VL, we have that R2 is 15k ohm. We just found it. So we need just to find a value for R3 that gave me a 3 volts as an output. So here we'll need a 7.5k ohm resistor and our work is done. So let's see this voltage divider network in a simulation to see how close KVL gets us. So the blue line is the VL voltage and it's around 3 volts. And the green line is the VH output voltage. Here it gives us 9.8 volts. So here we have the bigger discrepancy. However, Kirchhoff theory puts us really close to practical real values when designing circuits. Okay, so thank you so much for staying until the end of the video. Please subscribe to the channel if you like this kind of content. And if you like electronics or engineering overall, as always, I'm hoping this video was really informative. My name is David from Dark Kinetic, and I'll see you on the next one.